Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, May 23rd, 2024. My name is John Piranunzi, and this is the opening swing. Let's begin today as we always do with our news. Out of Europe, we had several PMIs, Purchasing Managers Index. We had uh, the German PMI, the European PMI, and the Great British PMI. Europe is slightly up, not really, hasn't really moved, no big moves off of this. We also had a few uh, speeches by central bankers and that is continuing into the U.S. hours. Uh, U.S. hours, we have our 8.30 news driver is initial jobless claims. We also have the Chicago Fed National Activity Index at 8.30. And then we have our U.S. PMI composite flash at 9.45 Eastern. New home sales at 10 a.m. and the Nat Gas report at 10.30. Through into the New York lunch, we have a couple Treasury announcements, shorter term, then the Kansas City Fed Manufacturing Index at 11 a.m., a few auctions, and then Bostic is speaking at 3 p.m. So that's what we have today on the docket. Uh, we'll quickly, qu quickly glance at uh, some higher time frame charts just to, um, and we just want to be aware on we're trading above the prior week, the prior months, and the, and now the prior days high. So a very bullish stance. And um, the important thing to see, to understand here is just we're currently accepting higher prices. And uh, we're about, we're trading in a very bullish stance on pretty much all the time frames right now. And the key area for that to remain true is the 4950 region as of now. Let's move on to our daily chart. On our daily chart here, there are a few things that I've been emphasizing. That is how this high and this low were kind of the bounds of our range. I also talked about this uh, developing distribution here. I talked about how the tapers looked pretty good and the interior was a little bit toothy. And what we see now, a day later, it's kind of filled out a little bit. It, it looks a little more complete. It's still fairly toothy, but it's getting to be pretty complete. And we got the push higher to new prices. And these new prices are being accepted as of now, uh, pushing through this key uh, 50 region, former all-time high. I talked about uh, how a lot of these areas, there are some intermediate areas in here, which all were potential uh, areas for us to test and find support. And it looks like we did this, um, the volatility yesterday for the, I'm sure everyone is, is pretty aware. We had the NVIDIA earnings after the bell. NVIDIA is a huge component of the S&P 500, something like 5%, even bigger piece of the NASDAQ. And NVIDIA beat, they did really well. So that was uh, some bullish medicine for the markets and we got the push higher and it's being sustained. So <clears throat> what we just on a very basic, basic sense, we have this uh, area of balance. We know that the key area in this area of balance is, uh, is, is the MCV POC of this area and we have pushed higher. So what I'm just, just in a very basic auction market sense of things, um, as long as we're able to continue to show excursion higher and hold on pullbacks, again, same old thing. I'm looking for higher prices. If we fall lower, then the first line of defense for buyers is the 4950 former all-time high region. And then dipping into here, the support would be expected to come in at the VPOC, which is also um, which is also the confluence of the 33, 37 area that I mentioned with our settlement just below at 28s. Also worth noting, coming into today, we have a gap to settle from yesterday. So that's worth mentioning. Let's take a look at some smaller time frame charts. Here is our 4x5 PNF. This is a chart that I like to use to look at structure. And the key sort of area that I, I will be uh, paying attention to today is um, this, this tan area, which is below uh, yesterday's high. Really, really down to about settlement, but. Um, primarily from about 45 to 35. And uh, I had mentioned yesterday, I've seen a lot of activity at, at, at the, at round numbers, 35, 45. Um, so, so I'm just keeping an eye on that. It seems to be where somebody is 
trying to sell stuff, but it's not stopping anyone. Uh, but anyway, this area is very key to me. This is the um, sort of the area above the VPOC and above uh, that key former all-time high area. So for me today, um, obviously, if we just hold above the 49s, then all of this down here doesn't really matter <laughs> because we're just going to be holding above. Um, but if we hold above the 49s and we're breaking new ground, if we dip below the 49s, then all of this structure becomes important. And the key with this tan area, which you can see, is we had this really, um, really clear area here, which is right around those 05s that we had talked about a lot. And once we broke through that area, we kind of just like shot up, fell back, and never retested this area. But uh, keep in mind what's going on, um, what's kind of going on right here in this tan area, where it this is, appeared to be the resistance, where we banged into it, went down to get more energy, banged into it again, sort of bounced around another try. And we're able to kind of push this area, but we are, are not able to push these lows. <clears throat> And every time we go back down, it's a higher low, and we're just gaining more momentum to just bang into this wall again. And finally, here we were able to put push through. So this structure, obviously, that's this is why I have it drawn. This structure is important. This is where I would expect the first line of defense to be, and for this low to be defended initially, if the if the bulls are still in control. That's what I'm looking for. So that's kind of the initial thought going into today. Let's get a little bit more specific on the on the um on the one by eight, two by four chart. Okay, here we have our one by eight PNF. And we'll quickly discuss the important areas which we kind of already began, but this is obviously a very important area, the 4950 region. And then up here, we have the 75s, which is um, the key area to be tested above, in my opinion, although above here, we have to recognize it's all uncharted territory. Beyond, uh, beyond this, the next big deal is the 5400, which is a big deal. But I'm going to tell you that based on what I've seen, uh, if you find yourself in a long today, I would be attentive to, like I said, the even numbers. Um, most particularly the 75s and maybe if we get up there the 85s and we'll see what happens at the 65s but like i said i've seen like offers lining up at at those uh strikes so for me if i'm in a short-term trade i'm going to be attentive to that as maybe places to scale because we have nothing else up here there's nothing else above the all-time high but anyway going down below we obviously have this area really going down to settlement i'm expecting on an initial test for there to be support of some variety in here if we lose this low and cannot recover then pretty much we're back the the environment changes for me if we lose this low then in that case um you know right now we're in price discovery higher if we lose this low it starts to become balance for me we also have the 15s here which is another area and then we have yesterday's low the 675s down to the 575s and below this i'm not going to really um i'm not going to uh plan for areas below this we have stock zones below that if we get below so let's talk about bullish ideas first we kind of have one in pro in progress here so what what would obviously be the most bullish idea of course it would be if this low holds and if we just see the same action that we talk about all the time which is you know, very common in the all-time high situations where we just kind of push highs, pull back weekly, push highs, get to the 75s. So obviously that's kind of like our most bullish scenario. And again, we'll just discuss, as I always do, this is always vulnerable to a deeper pullback that can't get the old high and does take the old low, in which case you might see something like a deeper pullback to here that could still hold this low but stop out anybody that's aggressive and then all of a sudden, you know, switch bullish again, get back above an important area and continue, or it could fall lower and just start grinding. And we could, what we could see today to be aware of, if we get this bullish push initially,
then we could see it hit an area of wherever the sort of buyers are exhausted temporarily or enough supply is hanging around where we start to see this kind of thing just like a gr like hits a certain price then we see like a grinding uh trend lower that just pushes through and everybody thinks that these areas are buys but they're not like i said for me anytime you see something like this you want to be looking at the prior high and the prior low and seeing which way we break but anyway so this would be the most bullish idea just the continued excursion higher that kind of grinds and then we would just be aware that it's vulnerable to um to either a deep pullback that then does not get the prior high and that deep pullback may also become a grinding trend lower so we're aware of those things let's discuss at least one more bullish idea which is possible based on what's going on here get rid of some of these thought I froze for a second thank goodness I didn't that's always a nightmare when we freeze but we could also just get kind of a very oops wrong color and let me just erase all of this we could also just kind of get like a very quick like everyone thinks we get a pullback we might get a very shallow pullback and then a rep repricing straight up to 75s that holds and then we just kind of do the same thing but from 75s so that that could also happen uh just flagging that let's talk about ways this could become bearish or more bearish than it is because that would be important as well uh like i said the selling could begin probably the, the most expected way that we could see bearish price action today for me would be sort of what i mentioned which is just kind of a grind that gets the test that we're all thinking about right here and then gets a larger rotation lower and then kind of just grinds down you know gives a, a a choppy trend lower uh those are tricky because like i said all of these pullbacks start to look like um look like they should be bought and the only way for me that i kind of uh guard against that is i'm looking for the, the prior high and then i'm looking for the prior low and i'm looking to see a push higher that takes that high and cannot take that low and that signals uh, resumption of bullishness for me but if we don't get that and we just start grinding then i don't buy these pullbacks so that could that's one way that we could see uh the action turn bearish another way that it could kind of happen or another similar sort of price action way it could happen we have this prior high we could see that this high get pushed fall back higher low and then we could see this action which pushes up just barely takes this high and then falls and then we have this sort of like high 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 and this area becomes important as resistance and then we start falling lower from the, from here if we get back into the prior days range if we get back below here if we see excursion below here like i said anything in here i would expect to see support on the initial push for oops that's not the color i wanted make it correct <laughs> But any oops, epic pen. But anything in here, I would say, would be vulnerable to a uh, to support that gets back out of range and then just continues if in here. Now, however, if instead we get into this area, and I'll get rid of all this again, if we drop into the prior day's range, let me get the right pen color here. If we drop into the prior day's range. And it looks like maybe we're getting support but then we can't really hold these prices and we start going obviously our next target area for me would be these 33s to 37s and the key target on on any failure would be settlement that would be the key target again i would be looking for support in here and then if we get all the way to settlement i would be looking for support ahead of this low for now so just flagging one way that this could all all happen is we could just have nothingness in or a very vo volatile wide trade in this area they could look bullish and look bearish at different times um just being aware of that because this is a, a wide area if we start falling below the prior week's vpoc so if we get below if we should happen to get below this area this would kind of start to change things for me as i as i've kind of mentioned like a push below here into this area still could be subject 
to a to a push higher that gets above any one of these areas. However, um, if we really start to push below below the prior week's VPOC, with if we don't get a quick rejection, then it would be pretty bearish. I'm not really expecting this today, however. I'm just mentioning for, for completeness. I think this would be less likely today, but I'm mentioning it. But anyway, if we are able to push below uh, the prior week's VPOC, 15s are the next target, followed by yesterday's low. Again, I'm not expecting yesterday's low to be tested, and if it is, I'm expecting support. If somehow we break below yesterday's low, or really any of these areas, like if we get below anything below the prior week's VPOC settle into this area, and we hold to close, that would be a surprise to me, and it would potentially change the environment if we settle down here and and cannot uh, don't recover by the end of the day. That would be a, that would be a change for me. Above these 49s, very bullish. Like any action up here is very bullish. Any action down here gets pretty bearish, and anything in this middle area is potentially messy and scalp territory. But uh, so that's what I'm seeing today. Uh, these are probably getting less interesting because the S&P 500 is getting less interesting. Uh, it's just kind of like, how are we going to make our way higher every day? But um, that's trading at the all time highs. Like I said, the good thing about this trip to the all time highs, at least for me, I'm noticing there still is uh, OK volatility. At times, not all the time. I mean, yesterday's day session was not so good, but um, that's kind of optimistic for me as we still have some volatility, uh, some movement that does seem to be tradable if you're attentive to it, which is good. And uh, if if not, if that's not your thing, crude oil seems to have been a really good trade lately. I've been more active in crude during the day. That's where I talk more about crude uh, at Convergent. And if this continues, we'll add crude to uh, to this. I also want to add um, at Convergent, we have a Memorial Day sale going on. Let me find my information for that. But there is a 20% off sale for new and returning members right now. Uh, our promo code is MEMDAY24. It should, it'll be in the description here. But um, that's a pretty big discount, guys. And so if anyone is thinking about trying Converge and you haven't, it's, I mean, it's fantastic. I started as a member many years ago and was fortunate enough to kind of like uh, just become a part of the, the organization as a contributor first and now as a, as a maven. And um, just has been instrumental for me, like as I, because I'm a former CME member. I was a high volume scalper like 20 years ago. And then went into other business stuff and um, got back into the markets around 2018 and working with Convergence has just been, I mean, it's shaped me as a trader working with FT. Um, so it's just been a fantastic opportunity. We have me, a balanced trader, um, who's another guy, very similar pedigree as me, prop firm, interest rate guy. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm going too long on all of this again, but we have that promo code. So I'd love to see more of you, get more of a chance to interact with you guys. Um, and so I just want to let you know about that. But we'll uh, we'll kind of move on and get ready for our day. Hope everyone has a really good morning going. I hope that continues. I hope you can find a way to improve your trading today somehow. And I hope maybe something I said today could help a little bit. Uh, and as always, I hope that you can make someone else smile today because that's more important than any of these numbers and squiggly lines. Okay, let's close it up here. Get out there, clock some ticks. Have a good day, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.